Hello and welcome to the channel. Hillbilly Military Modeling here with a new video for you guys. Uh, this is our M4A3 Sherman 105mm Howitzer by Tamiya. This will be the build video. So in our last video this is where we left the, uh, the kit and now it's time to get building. As always you're going to want to wash your parts to make sure that you get rid of any release compound that may be on them especially the tracks. So first up uh, we're going to work on the lower hull and here we have the parts separated and cleaned up for assembly and we'll be putting the uh, transmission cover and our final drive covers on and also the uh, front adjoining rib for the upper hull. So next up we're going to assemble our bogies and there are six sets of these. Now I always like to cut the uh, sprue gates long on these. Makes it easier for us to be more precise when it comes time to trim it. And that way we're not cutting into the parts. Uh, we're just trimming away the excess polystyrene. With that done, uh, we'll take our polishing stick here and we're going to sand out the uh, parting seam for the mold and you're going to want to clean up these uh, road wheels nicely there you don't want that rib running around the center of them it's very important that all the parts are cleaned up like this um, you don't want any unwanted seams that will catch paint and maybe even panel liner later and all of a sudden stand out and at that point uh, it's really hard to cover that up so it's important to get the basics and the basis foundations uh, done before you assemble. Now to me it makes it really easy on us uh, to assemble these uh, bogies. Minimal parts but the detail is really excellent and we've come to expect that from Tamiya kits and the fit is really nice here I've installed the vertical volute springs and next we install the support roller and of course our road wheels now you're going to be careful about putting these road wheels on make sure that the detailed side of the wheels are facing outside and not inside <laughs> The details only on one side of these road wheels. And it goes together very easy. Now it just takes just a little touch of glue. And I'm going to run this to me extra thin cement uh, down the seam of the bogey. I want to make sure that we have plenty of glue surface here. And our axles and uh, support rollers are far enough away that we don't have to worry about accidentally gluing those up. They'll stay free. Now after the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin has set up and dried completely, I go back in and I sand down the seam and you can see right here on that support uh, wire bracket there uh, the one on the left I've sanded that one down and the one on the right is yet to be done but that helps blend the surface in now most of this is not going to be seen but I like to go ahead and do it anyway so next we're going to do the drive sprockets now these contain uh, poly cap now I've chosen the late version of these drive sprockets. The early version is also supplied in this kit. Now it's time to attach our running gear, but first we need to put together our idlers. They too have uh, poly caps. We also have to build up the uh, rear hull plate here and attach that. And the good thing with these poly caps that Tamiya has for our drive sprockets and our idlers is it's going to make it so much easier for us when it comes time to paint and to weather the vehicle. 
So I'm not real sure if I'm gonna put a driver in this or not, or just have the driver's hatch closed, but I installed his uh, torso mount anyway, and also the deflector on the rear of the upper hull. So here you can see we have a gap uh, just above the final drive cover between the uh, front plate uh, or transmission cover and the hull. And I go ahead and I fill that with some uh, modeling putty. And what I use, I use this painter spatula and I kind of push that in from the inside. And we'll go back and trim that off and touch up the filler and once it's dried, we'll sand all that down. So now what we're going to look at is these big gaps that we have. So these sponsons are not enclosed. And we're going to do something about that because I, I don't really like that. So Now the good thing is the upper hull has a 45 degree bevel on the bottom edge. And that'll give us an area to attach our uh, fill pieces that we're going to make. I cut us some strips uh, to cover those gaps. Now this is polystyrene sheet. It's uh, I cut these 16 millimeter by 130 millimeter, and it's the one millimeter thick poly sheet. So I sanded us a uh, 45 degree angle bevel <laughs> on the edge of it so that it'll engage the uh, side of the upper hole but we don't want this to stick down below the lower edge of the upper hole so we need to make sure that we fit it and it it is short to the rear of the vehicle because remember now we have that rear plate that's going to come up um, in the back and the way I do that is I simply place the uh, poly sheet on a raised surface. That way I can angle my sanding block at 45 degrees. Now I'm using a block of wood as my raised surface and that helps keep it nice and straight and flat so that we've got a nice even edge that we're sanding into it. And we're just going to sand that bevel in probably needs just a little bit more sanding but we're going to bevel the front and the rear of these pieces as well and we want to make sure that we've got a really good fit before we commit to gluing this in place <laughs> now I'm not too worried about the inside corners there on the front and we're also going to have to notch the rear we can glue these strips in first and then come back and notch those out and as you can see here I've notched it in the front so it'll slip over the uh, transmission cover and also it'll slip around the uh, rear hull plate so we have to kind of put it in at an angle and slide it forward or rearward well you know what I mean And that's a pretty good fit. So now we're ready for glue. And since there's nothing else to go inside the hull, there's no reason for us to not go ahead and, in, and join the upper and lower together. So that's what I go ahead and do. Now we're going to work on our spare track pad racks and our rear stowage uh, rack as well. These spare track pads have, uh, well, they've got ejector pin holes in the bottom of them, so we're going to take and clean that up. A little bit of uh, modeling putty, and then we'll sand that off nice and smooth, and that'll take care of that for us. Now we're going to go ahead and put on all of our lights and brackets and tools. I like to put the tools on the vehicle and paint them there. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You can paint them separately and attach them later. Just make sure you use a little CA glue to hold them down if you have already painted them. Let's take a little look here at our bow machine gun. 
Now, I went ahead and drilled a hole in the end of it. Uh, you got to have somewhere for your bullets to come out. And I've also drilled out the uh, heat vent holes that are on the shield. And that'll give us added detail when we go to weather the tank. It's going to look pretty good. Next up is our main armament and our turret assembly. And also our 50 caliber machine gun. So when it comes to the 50 caliber machine gun, um, there is an ejector pin mark in one of the vent holes on the receiver. Now I did drill this one out as well on the end of the barrel. As you can see here. So on the receiver section of the machine gun, there is a heat shield and it also guards the barrel and protects it. But it's got these holes in it and those are vent holes. It allows the uh, breach of the barrel to cool. But they're, they're not very deep. So what I decided to do is I'm going to go ahead and drill these out just like we did on the um, heat shield on our bow gun. And that deeper detail will take the weathering effects much better and make it more prominent. And it'll make our 50 caliber machine gun stand out much better. Much better? Does that sound right? <laughs> so, more better? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but you get you get what I'm talking about so I go ahead and get that done also while assembling our main armament I went ahead and coated that with this mr. primer surfacer 1000 and then sanded it down to make sure we don't have any seam line there for our tank commander I've decided to use the figure where his head is just barely up outside of the commander's cupola with his binoculars. Now I did leave a piece of sprue attached to his head. I, I haven't glued the head onto the body yet. That's going to help us when, our, when, we, when we do our painting. Giving us something a little bit better to hold on to his head with. Our tracks are of the uh, new type of material which will take the uh, regular model glue to glue those together. And also we've got our stowage to glue up and sand. And I decided to put all that together and I just piled it all up on the back of the tank. That's not where it's going to be when we finish the vehicle. But as you can see, it's quite a bit of stowage. And I appreciate that in a kit. I really do. So to me, it didn't uh, provide us with any periscope guards, um, which is a, a feature of the Sherman tank. And I did some checking online and I found uh, this version of the vehicle some with them and some without them so I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make some. Here I have an assortment of uh, jewelry wire that I got from the hobby shop and I have one example of a periscope guard that came from an Easy 8 that I built last year. So I chose the 24 gauge wire and I used the one guard that I have to trace out a template to bend our wire on and for the right length of the uh, top two bars. <laughs> and then I realized that uh, it would be impossible for me to get these angles right without a jig. So I took some craft sticks and made a jig so that I'd be able to glue these up. Uh, and then I realized that uh, since I have to use CA glue or super glue, uh, that it's going to be a problem with it sticking to the wood. So I did coat the wood down with furniture polish uh, and it kind of worked. <laughs> and here we are with our first one made. And I think it came out pretty good considering uh, I've never done it before, but you know, you got to try new things, guys. And it's not that far away from uh, the kit part. So all we got to do now is make three more and we're ready to go. And after a little bit of careful trimming and, and a little bit of uh, CA glue, uh, we've got those attached to the tank. Now Tamiya gives us a board to put on the front of our tank here, um, but there's no brackets for it. So I'll go ahead and I'll make these brackets. 
out of a uh, 0.5 millimeter thick poly sheet and they are uh, one millimeter by four millimeter strips two for each side and now we have somewhere to mount our board to now what most people don't realize is why that board was actually there uh, and what it's for is to keep water and mud from sliding uh, right up the uh, sloped front of the vehicle and into the hatches uh, when the vehicle crosses uh, streams and uh, through big mud holes or uh, rivers and stuff. And an added uh, plus for the having the board on the front of the vehicle is you have somewhere to put extra stowage and also uh, extra sandbags or whatever else to help stop uh, anti-tank rounds. To me it doesn't provide us a tow cable for this vehicle but I think it would be a nice detail. So I strip the insulation off of 18 gauge automotive electrical wire and I pull five strands of wire out of that and now I'm going to use a uh, drill and I'm going to spin the wire up to give us uh, a nice tight coil for our tow cable and you've probably seen me do this before if you've seen one of my other videos the Sturmkaschutz I made a tow cable for it and this works pretty good uh, yeah that's good we're gonna use that now Sherman's have a really specific type of cable end and I only have one example which is item number 24 here so we're going to make two of these <laughs> to go on our cable and what I've done is I've chucked up a piece of sprue in my drill and I'm going to use a file to shape it get it down I I'm using the original one that I have on hand for my dimensions and eventually I find the right file but uh, by spinning and filing the uh, sprue we can run it down to the diameter that we want and I'm checking to see if it's about where we want it and then we go ahead and round off the end of it and be very careful don't, don't apply too much pressure once we get it to the largest diameter that we need, we're going to spin down the shank of it that is going to attach to the cable. Here I'm using a polishing stick just to kind of sand it out a little bit, um, kind of smooth out the rough edges on it. And that'll get it ready for us to do the finished work that we need to do to it. Here I've uh, filed down one side of it. And we're going to have to file down the other side of it. Trying to keep these even all the way around. And here I've got both sides of it filed down. And that's going to form our loop uh, for the end of the tow cable. So next up, I take and I scribe a line down the middle. And I drill two small pilot holes in it. And then I come back and drill them out a little bit larger. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and cut out the center and then trim it up with uh, a hobby knife. I'll also take a polishing stick and sand off the uh, the edges and that's where we want to be. So next thing I'm going to do is take this to me extra thin and I'm just going to paint it up with that and allow the uh, the glue because it's a really strong glue this will melt in all the rough edges and give it a smooth appearance for us.
Yeah, there we go. So next up, uh, we separate it from the sprue, and then I drill a hole in the end of it to accept our cable. Now, depending upon what diameter your cable ends up being, will determine <laughs> what size hole you need to drill into it. And we'll attach that with CA glue. As you can see, it's a small part, so don't lose them. Now, after it's all assembled, uh, we can take and form it to the hull of the vehicle, which is really nice when it comes to copper wire. Another part that's missing from the kit is the uh, Commander's Periscope. So I'm going to get my dimensions off of this EZ-8 that I built uh, last year. And we're going to start out with a small piece of polystyrene. This is one millimeter thick poly sheet. And I'm going to make it uh, four millimeters wide. And it's going to end up being six millimeters. But I'll make it a little bit longer. Give us something extra to hold on to. So I'm using a pair of parallel pliers here to hold uh, the piece of uh, polystyrene sheet so that I can file the end detail for it. Then I need to make the bracket for it and I'm using this uh, 0.5 millimeter thick poly sheet to do that and we're just going to wrap it around. I make the pieces a little bit longer than they need to be uh, and then we just trim it off flat and sand it smooth. And that's what we end up with. So there's a slot and locking notches in the back side of this uh, bracket. And so I drill that out and cut a slot in it. Then I use some stretched uh, sprue to represent our locking knob. And I glue that into the bottom hole. And then I come in with a polishing stick and smooth it out a little bit. I also put in some detail on the sides, which are the uh, spring clamps that holds it into place. And then we put a forehead pad also on it. With that, that wraps up this video, guys. Our build is complete. And um, next video will be painting, so you're not going to want to miss that. As always, I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see here, uh, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I put out a new video, which will be coming up pretty soon. See you in the next video. And remember, guys, these models will not build themselves.